Hello and welcome to our roundup of the European Parliament's latest plenary session here in Strasbourg. The week saw action on the dramatic developments in Ukraine, on Switzerland's referendum to restrict immigration, on the quest for a European railway system, and on plans for an EU-wide emergency phone system. We begin with Ukraine, from where a European Parliament delegation has just returned. The rapidly evolving situation in Ukraine caught most by surprise. Despite an EU-brokered agreement between the government and opposition, Ukraine's parliament moved even faster to redirect Ukraine on a European track. This after President Viktor Yanukovych walked away from an association agreement with the EU, failed to crush opposition protests in a bloody crackdown, then fled from the capital Kiev. The European Parliament approved a resolution which calls for moves to help stabilize the country. Elmar Brock of the EPP group is chairman of the European Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee and has returned from a visit to Ukraine. I think we have to help the Ukrainian people now. We have to avoid the default of the country. The people must have jobs, wages and bread. And here we have to help them in the short term. Uh, and uh, we have seen that here people fought under danger of their own life for their freedom. They saw Europe as a sign not just for economic situation. They said we would like to live like in Poland or Ireland, in the same conditions for our children. And I think this we have to support. This is a great moral victory also of Europe and the Europe mo European model. Much remains in question as Europe and its international partners support efforts to hold early elections and establish a reformist government. The financial costs could be high as well as the risks as Russia vies to maintain its influence in the former Soviet land. On to Switzerland where voters have narrowly approved a referendum for tighter immigration controls. That's jeopardized Swiss-EU agreements that have enabled the free flow of people, goods and services. Swiss voters were deeply divided, with barely over 50 percent voting in favor of limiting immigration. The EU is the country's largest trading partner, and Switzerland benefits from preferential trade agreements. But many Swiss are concerned that foreigners make up about 25 percent of the country's population. Some EU officials have urged caution in retaliating for the referendum and prefer to wait and see how the Swiss government puts the immigration limits into practice. Mairead McGuinness is vice chair of the EPP group. There are very deep ties and agreements signed between Switzerland and the European Union and agreements count. So as I look at it now, there is a period of reflection to take into account what has happened here, but also to be very clear and say that there are consequences uh, if Switzerland decides that the fundamental freedom of movement which is agreed between the two parties, is now to be sundered. And I think in particular for our Croatian friends who've just joined the European Union a couple of months ago in 2013, um, they believe that they were entering and that they would have the same arrangement with Switzerland. We need to be very clear uh, that we want Croatia to be treated as an equal player with all members of the European Union and that Switzerland would acknowledge that or indeed there have to be fallout from it. Officials are hoping to find a solution to preserve agreements on cooperation, like Erasmus Studies and the Horizon 2020 program for research and development. But they also warn that trade could stand to suffer if Switzerland pushes ahead with immigration controls. Keeping Switzerland in a greater European trade zone strengthens the world's largest single market so would creating a single European rail network. The European Parliament has approved far-reaching measures that would break down national barriers and boost railway travel. The fourth railway package will help open up domestic railway markets, creating more competition and improving interoperability. It guarantees the freedom to provide domestic transport services across Europe. It would improve transparency by requiring the separation of finances between infrastructure and operational costs. The EPP group's Mathieu Grosch is rapporteur of the legislation. If we know that, uh, for instance, today the modal share of rail in passenger transport in Europe in general is around 6%, that means that you have more than 90% on the road. We say if we could increase the efficiency of the rail, we could first create jobs. 
bring partly a solution to congestion in urban areas on the roads as such, do a big thing for health because CO2, you have less CO2 on the rail. So I think the efficiency of the rail is really a very important issue and we can bring here a European added value because we have no European market. The railway package will also establish a single EU-wide certification for trains to lower costs and ensure interoperability. Finally, an EU standard for emergencies. eCall is a system that alerts emergency services, and the European Parliament has approved legislation that would extend its reach across the EU. That number is 112. eCall will become mandatory in all cars across the EU, automatically alerting authorities when an airbag is triggered in an accident. Integrated GPS sends out the location. The EPP Group's Andreas Schwab is a member of the Internal Market and Consumer Protection Committee. He says the mandatory requirement for autos is a way to get all the EU28 to adopt eCall and its number 112. We have been calling very since quite a while, since a long time, member states to introduce this 112 emergency network all over Europe so that European tourists, that businessmen, that uh, consumers all over Europe are always available to call um, this emergency number European-wide. Unfortunately, it has, it has, this has not worked as we wanted, but with the introduction of this system into new cars from 2017 onwards, we will improve the infrastructure and we will help to make sure that the 112 emergency number will be available all over Europe for all citizens. And I think that's a very important step. eCall is one of the EPP Group's success stories, which you can find in special in-depth reports on the EPP TV webpage at this link. And don't forget to put the number in your mobile phone. The eCall number is 112. That's it for now from Strasbourg. See you next week in Brussels. And find out more about the activities of the largest political force in Parliament by checking eppgroup.eu. Until next time, thanks for watching.